as you exhale, that this is you exhaling as you're being recorded. So maybe you can slow your breathing down. So as we notice the breath stretching it out like taffy, so it can take up a bit more space in the body, a bit more space around you. And now I'll invite you to imagine as you breathe that we are all gathered together around a beautiful campfire on a winter night. And you can feel the ground beneath you, feel the warmth of the fire against your skin. And as you look up, it's a perfectly clear night and you can see that the sky is glowing, filled with stars. And so just take a moment to allow yourself the gift of this experience of this beautiful night under the stars. And as you take in the night sky, I'll invite you to imagine that each of these millions of stars is a moment from the last year. Each of these stars is a single moment from the year 2021. And they're not arranged chronologically, they're scattered across the sky. And in a moment, one of those stars is going to light up a little bit brighter than the others. And, and this star that lights up contains a moment from 2021 that sh was luminous, a moment that shined with importance or joy, whatever that quality was, it makes this moment light up. And so notice, that a star in the sky lights up and it starts gently coming towards you. And as the star approaches, see if you can allow this moment to reveal itself, this shining luminous moment from 2021, it might just be tiny. And there's no rush, you can allow this moment to find you. And as a beautiful shining moment from 2021 begins to reveal itself, see if you can really allow yourself to feel that moment, any images that come to you, sounds, tastes, smells, What was it about this moment that made it light up so intensely? And see if you can allow yourself to re-experience as much as possible the feeling of that moment in your body and in your senses. And then we can expand a little bit the story of this moment, unpacking it. What came before? What led up to this shining, luminous moment last year? Was it something you had prepared for and were expecting? Was it surprising? And then on the other side, sometimes these moments of luminosity change us in some way. They, uh, change the way we see ourselves or the world or ourselves in the world, what if anything shifted for you as a result of this moment? And just take a moment to breathe with it, letting this moment kind of expand and deepen for you. The story of it may be revealing itself in a new way. And just really gently bring yourself back to your breath. Letting the breath be infused with this story of this moment. 
And let's all do one together. Just take a nice slow breath in. Release it with a sigh. <sighs> if they're closed, you can open your eyes. And what we'll do is take about three or four minutes just in silence to take any notes about anything that came to you during that. You can write in, this is just for you. You won't be reading these. So you could draw a picture. You can write, man, I hate visualizations, whatever, whatever feels alive for you. Take about three minutes for some notes to process whatever came to you. All right, wherever you are with your notes, that's where you be. So maybe one more word, the end, and then they all lived happily ever after, whatever, whatever feels right. And what's gonna happen now is you'll go in, um, not yet, Dave, because I wanna explain how we're gonna do this, but we'll go into breakout rooms. Uh, there'll be four of you per room. So if you're not on camera right now and you're able to be on camera, it's really nice to be able to see you in those breakout rooms. And if not, that, that's okay too. If you need to be audio only, that's, that's fine. So the way that it'll work um, is you will uh, each have a chance to share your story. And when you're sharing your story, you will have up to three minutes to do it. So I recommend using a hand computer or a stopwatch, something just to make sure that you stay in those three minutes. If you get to three minutes and you're not done yet, it doesn't mean you have to like stop in the middle of a thought. It just means gently begin to wrap up your story. So if we could all hold ourselves accountable to that, it'll help a lot. Um, if you are the storyteller, you are under no obligation to be coherent, interesting, or even entertaining. Those three minutes are yours to explore your story or whatever comes up in whatever way feels right to you. The one thing I'll say is that sometimes I talked about non-judgment non earlier. Sometimes I notice this in myself in these, I will start out by editorializing about my story. And that might sound like this, oh man, that guy's voice was like, it just put me to sleep. So I'm not sure that this story is good. Actually, I'm pretty sure it sucks. Anyway, here it is. And then you share the story. What I'd invite us to do is not do that to simply have that urge, which is totally natural, and then start your story. Last year on July 22nd, and then you're off to the races. It helps so much. If you're not the storyteller, you have a very important role. You are the listeners. And in these circles, I'd like to invite us to listen in a way that's slightly different than the way we listen in the normal world. Um, I have a teacher who calls it listening with soft and shining eyes. Um, if you think of how Mr. Rogers listens to children, it's like a whole body experience as if the next words out of that child's mouth might change the course of the universe. That's how we want to listen to each other, because for all we know, those words might change the course of our lives. Um, so as a listener, your only job is to support the storyteller with your full compassionate attention, right? Um, when the storyteller is done, when you're done with your round of stories, you can elect to receive appreciations if you'd like. Appreciations is not feedback. Here's the difference. Feedback sounds like this. Um, Barb, your story was good, except that part with the balloon. I didn't buy it. So if you could work on that, that's feedback. That's not safe space. That, 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 that's violence against our stories. We want our stories to feel safe. So an appreciation sounds more like this. It might sound like, um, Ross, I love that moment in the story when you were in the canoe. And that's it. An appreciation is simply something we loved in the story, not why, not how it relates to us, right? And I think that's, oh, the, the last thing I'll say is if you, for whatever reason, simply do not feel moved to share a story in this circle, nobody is required to, it's an invitation. So if it comes to you and you don't wanna share, you can simply say, I'm here to listen tonight. And that is a stunningly beautiful way to participate in these, right? So um, Dave, if you wanna put the, um, the, the instructions in the chat, just so we have them. And then these last two, when you're done with your stories and if there's extra time, and there should be, two things that you can discuss with your group. One, what were some themes that you heard in those stories? What themes were in common between the stories of these shining moments? And the second, is based on the energy of these stories, what wants to be brought forward into 2022. The wording is important. This is not an intention. This is not something that you want to bring forward. This is something that wants to be brought forward. 
in a beautiful way, right? From the energy of these stories. And then we'll come back. So Barb, I think we'll have 25 minutes for this. Correct, 25 minutes. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions or anything comes up, you can hit the red bat signal button, um, call to host, and I'll come swooping in with hopefully help for you. But if you, before we go into the breakouts, any questions about what you'll be doing in the breakouts? I know it's a lot of guidelines for the most human thing we do, but because we're not around a campfire, I find it really useful over Zoom to have, to have those agreements. So any questions? All right, my friends, have fun in there and we will see you in 25 minutes. Welcome back. <coughs> hello, hello, friends. I feel like we all split off into individual campfires and now we're kind of, and those got cold. And so now we're coming back together around the big campfire. <laughs> welcome back. Hi, Joe, welcome back. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they say to people in the movies when they've been like in another planet or something. Like, yeah. Oh, well, well, what have you learned in your time on that other planet? Well, yes. What did you see? Yeah. yeah. It's great. That was yeah. fun. Yay. And we're going to have everybody else flooding back in in a sea of humanity in three, two, well, everybody hide, Thank quick, you. hide. So that, no, don't. <laughs> um, there they, here they come. One of the things I've come to welcome, but I, I let just take a moment as everybody pops back in. One of the things I love about story circles is looking at everybody's faces afterwards oh, and yeah. how different they are than they mm -hmm. were before. Mm. Um, so I'm just gonna take a moment and you can do this too, just scan through the gallery and, and you can even feel, I was saying to folks who popped in a little early, it's as if we've all been on our individual adventures now around little campfires, and now we're around the big campfire again. So something I'm always curious about, because I can see and feel the shift in the group. Um, anything you noticed, that, and you can do this in the chat as well if that's more comfortable, but what did you notice about that experience? What, what will you take with you from it? Maybe anything that might have surprised you about those story circles? Um, if I may, mm -hmm. um, what uh, stood out to me, one of the things that we, that was a theme within our uh, stories that we shared was connection. And mm -hmm. of course, connection was what we were gaining through the sharing of our stories with each other. So it Beautiful. was kind of a meta, meta, meta connection. Yeah. And I love, I'm just looking in the chat. Thank you, Don. I, I, I love um, the healing power of water was a, was a theme in one of the circles is so beautiful. Anything else that you all genuinely heartwarming as opposed to heartwarming in a fake way? Um, <laughs> I, I love that. Everyone's yeah. story had a challenge. Yeah. Yes. Um, children or mm. sisterhood or brotherhood was it was a theme beautiful yeah, community. Daniel, community yeah what what i took away is all there were three of us and we all had created experiences or created something brought something into the world mm. and 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 that's so what so much what we need it's almost a response to your question what's being drawn out into the world and we so much we, there's that's what we need for our future is to co-create a new future and yeah. uh and each of us we, we're doing that in our lives so it was really really heartwarming i love that yeah and you know to to build on that daniel something that is really kind of embedded in what you just shared is that these stories can be almost like beacons that we take with us into the future as we try to create it instead of trying to like create it from the mind there's so much wisdom in our collective lived experience right and we can hear that in the stories that we share. Thank you for bringing that in. Yeah. Anything else that you all noticed about the listening, the stories, themes? A couple of the stories in our group had this interesting theme of, of like courage mixed with care. So, mm being tenacious and staying 
dedicated and persevering to accomplish something meaningful while at the same time paying close attention to ourselves and making sure that we're not pushing ourselves past the breaking point. But I think discovering that that breaking point is a lot farther on than we may have expected it to be. Wow. Thank you. I, you know, something I'm noticing as I'm scanning the chat, you know, all of our stories involve trips and travel, water, community, sisterhood, um, is that it cannot be an accident that you were A, that you're here tonight, and B, that you were in the group that you were in, and that the story that was shared is the one that came out, right? There, it, it is not an accident that that was the theme, Dan, in all of your stories. There is something at work that is beyond each of us as individuals, it's beyond each of our individual stories, right? And these stories come forth and sometimes we don't even know why. And we're like, all right, I guess I'll go with this. So I'm like grateful to those of you who trusted the story and just like shared it. What a gift to, to the group to see their story, their reality, their shining moment reflected in each of yours. Yeah. So we're going to move on, but I want to make space if there's something beauty springing forth among the ruins of the pandemic. Yes, right? If there's anything else you could pop it into the chat, what I'm going to do is gently guide us to kind of sit with these themes, sit with these stories for a moment. And we're going to attune. I think, Sam, you came up with the beautiful phrase that this is a ritual recalibration in a way, right? What, what do we want to attune to? And so I'll invite us all just to place your hand on your heart for a moment. And if you want to, you can close your eyes, but feel the energy of this group, the energy of these stories. And I'll invite you to connect with something that wants to be brought forward from the energy of these stories, from these shining moments, wants to be brought forward and bloom in 2022. And what I'll invite you to do, making sure we're all muted, is just gently start repeating to yourself, almost like a mantra, whatever this is that wants to be brought forth. So just a word or two, connection, sisterhood, the beauty of water, whatever it is for you. And just start to repeat this in your body. And Elizabeth, I'll hand it over to you to take it from here. And as you repeat the word as a mantra, a thought, just begin to open your eyes or with a soft gaze. Just begin to rub your hands together and drop the mantra into your hands. In an, into the knowing body. Keep speaking the mantra and see what movement or gesture emerges. How can you play with that moment, that mantra, the distillation in a movement? And maybe a movement comes immediately or maybe you roll through different movements with your hands. But just allow one repeatable movement to emerge that you can express with your hands. It could be small, it could be big, it could have contact, your fingers, your palms, your hands could be crossed, just all the ways to play with that mantra as a repeatable gesture. And breathe with that. Enjoy it, luxuriate in this movement. And you might just for playing, speed it up a little bit or slow it down and see how that might change it or what information, what feedback, if there's any other to distill there from the knowing body gives back. 
Beautiful. And continue to do this movement and look out and see somebody else and just continue. It's like rubbing your tummy and patting your head. Continue to do it and see the others. See the others' expressions from the knowing body of their mantra. Again, see who's here. And find somebody else. And really, as you're doing your own, with curiosity, see that other mantra, that other moment, beautiful, and find another. And now look out and find another and say hello by copying their movement back to them. So now we're gonna to begin to change our dance. Find somebody else and copy their movement back to them. I see you, I see that moment. And now find somebody else and say, I see you and copy that moment. And now you've let go of yours but you're copying that other to another. And find one more person. Beautiful, and take a breath. And now let, just let that dissolve because I'm crazy about birds. And just find your wings and your hands. Beautiful, Randy wants to find her wings and her arms. I like that. You can choose. And look at all the different winged creatures out there, flying, flocking together. And just remain connected to your heart and that mantra and feel the wind lifted up. Feel the wind lifted up into the sky. The seed has been planted and now we're all soaring, all flying together. And just allow the hands to fly up, fly up, fly up to the heavens and allow your arms to stretch, <gasps> stretch to the sky, stretch the starry night above. I'm doing little twinkle hands, stretching, stretching like little shaking antenna, hands on sky, and bring them down to yourself, hands on heart. Mm. hands towards one another. Yes, we are all here. And hands on heart. Thank you. Michael. Just take a moment, keep your hands on your heart and take a moment to take each other in. And you can like gaze intently at each other and nobody will know. So it's not creepy. One of the benefits of Zoom. So really take a moment to take each other in. I love Elizabeth, what you said earlier, I've got your back. And there's a sense when we were saying hello to each other through these gestures that we're holding each other's prayers and mantras and light for each other. We have each other's backs across the miles. So in very tangible, real ways, none of us are carrying these prayers and these mantras alone. One of the beautiful things about sharing stories and movement the way we have tonight is it reminds us that we become carriers of each other's stories. We become carriers of each other's light. And in those dark moments, and there will be dark moments, we can always remember these small moments of play, of murmuration, of connection. We can have a sip of water and remember the story that we might've heard tonight about somebody's shining moment with water, right? 
And so with that in mind, I'm just gonna invite us to close with, with three breaths. In the first breath, just connect with yourself, connect with your heart, connect with the infinite constellation of stories that lives inside of you. So nice breath in, breathing in and releasing. In this next breath, I'll invite us just to be aware that the breath we're breathing in was in another being 20 seconds ago. It was in a plant. Maybe it was in the body of someone on this call a couple days ago. So this breath, in a very literal way, connects us with every living being on the planet. No big deal, just science. So here we go. Nice slow breath in. Feeling that connection and releasing. And the last breath we'll take together, I'm gonna invite the awareness that because matter is neither created nor destroyed, the molecules we're breathing in have quite literally been around since the beginning of time. They are stardust, we are stardust. And so with this breath, let this breath be a small but important part of this infinite story that stretches from the beginning of time, weaves through history, visits us in this brief moment, and then goes on its journey into the future. And with that, nice breath in and release. So beautiful to spend this time with you. So to close the ritual, I'm just going to blow out the candle before we hand it back over to Sam. So if you have a candle and you wanna blow it out, cool. It's just beautiful to see all of you shining through the magic of Zoom. Thank you so much for having us. Barb, thank you as always for inviting us to play with you. And um, Sam, we'll, we'll send it back to you to close us out. Thank you, Barb. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you, everybody, for making the effort to be here and be present for one another. I thought we would just have a short, final four minute close as a way to hold space for anybody to offer any final thought. My invitation to you would be to offer a final thought, which is, in effect, your your last little note that you're passing through the digital wires to one another as we start to ritually recalibrate for 2022. Maybe that means it's something special that you felt or heard tonight that you just want to share. Um, maybe it's something else. It could just be a single word or a clause, um, but you don't have to say anything. I'll let you know when we're close. We'll do it for about three or four minutes. And let's, let's see what our final observations and gifts to one another are. So be sure to take yourselves off mute. I, um, hi everybody, I'm Maggie. Uh, I had, I, my group was so beautiful. My storytelling group just uh, such amazing human beings and listening to them tell their stories was so spectacular. And uh, something kept kind of um, tapping me from, from somewhere far away. And it was th that uh, a woman that I know who lives in Alaska recently said to me that when she was studying photography, that the, the, the assignment changed and it, it was raining. I don't remember what happened. They ended up having to take pictures of flowers lying in the muddy grass instead of taking pictures of bears. And her, and her photography teacher said, blessed are the flexible, for they shall never be bent out of shape. <laughs> and um, there was so much beautiful flexibility in the stories that were told in my group. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. I meant to share it with the four, so I'm sharing it with the many. Nancy and I, who've been here before, had... Kaz and Ruth in our group, and we want them to come back. Yes, please. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes. I'm I'm just taken by the beauty of faces right now. That that um, faces. I am 
in almost tears over how beautiful. I'd, I'd like to, I, um, we spoke about connection and children and childhood and relationships and being old and caring for elders and just so much about like the real physical relationship of things. And so I'd like to leave people with an invitation to um, what right came to my mind in leaving our discussion, which was so beautiful, was a memory of how I used to and my friends used to go sit on the stoop or sit on the front steps, just go sit outside until somebody else came out to play. So I'd just like to invite everybody to find a moment to just go sit outside and wait, you know, and see who comes out to play and see what we can do to re-engage again in some physical connections um, during, you know, while we're still in the pandemic, but we can be outside and say hello to somebody. Going once. I have something. Yeah, go ahead, Ruth. Um, this thought just came in that I pray for fearless love to be with me and with all human beings so that we have the courage to see the miraculous. Amen. Going twice. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Lee, for this beautiful invitation to be with all of you. We're so grateful. And yes, the faces and the eyes and the movement and the gestures and the words uh, stay for me, stay with me for a very long time. Thank you. So let's, let's try to keep finding our way back to one another. So, you know, we said that this is part of a ritual recalibration and part of what we want to do together is amidst everything else that's happening, right? In everybody else's life, let's make Wednesdays a part of our shared ritual. So every Wednesday this year, we're going to do something together. And some days it might be like this and some days it might be something else. In fact, I'll share with you in the chat. This time next week, we're gonna be joined by the remarkable Jenny Finn, uh, who has created this amazing school called Springhouse. So there's the poster. So come on back. But also a reminder that um, let's use that space, uh, that network space to keep these conversations going, to stay connected and to find new opportunities and new excuses for wonder. Happy New Year, everybody. See you next week. Happy New Year, thank you. Same to you and everyone else. Happy New Year, thank you. Thank you. Thanks Happy so New much. Year. Bye. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you.